Modesty. The tenth fruit of the Holy Ghost is modesty. My child, if there is one virtue more than another that makes us resemble the angels of God in heaven, it is the virtue of holy modesty. And if there is one virtue more than another that the devil seeks to rob us of, it is the same virtue. O、oh, my child, try to learn then its value, that you may be willing to sacrifice everything you possess on earth rather than lose it. The Snow White Doves. Cardinal Baronius relates that when a certain pious girl named Georgia was on the point of death, a great multitude of snow white doves were seen hovering about her. And when her body was brought to the church after her death, the doves flew to that part of the roof which was immediately above the corpse and remained there till after the interment. The people ran to the church to see this wonderful thing, and they were persuaded that God had sent his angels, under the appearance of doves, to honor one whom they all esteemed and reverenced on account of her angelic modesty. St. Francis of Sales Advice My child, he says, when the devil tempts you to do something that offends the virtue of modesty, imitate the example of little children. Who, at the sight of some animal coming to hurt them, always run to the arms of their parents, or at least cry on them to come and help them. Run in this way to the arms of Jesus, and ask him to protect you, or call upon Mary, your heavenly mother, not to let the wicked one come near you. Run to her in spirit, and hide yourself under her mantle, and you will be safe, for Satan cannot touch you there. A child who loves this great virtue of modesty will keep a strict watch over his eyes, so that they may not see things which may tempt him to offend God. St. Aloysius and the Empress. St. Aloysius, before entering the Society of Jesus, was sent by his father into Spain, where he spent about two years in the court of the Empress as one of her pages. Some years afterwards, when in Rome, One of his companions said to him, When the Empress comes to Rome, you will be able to recognize her. St. Aloysius replied, If I were near her and heard her speak, I might be able to know her by her voice, but I would not know her by her face, for I never saw it. So great was the angelic modesty of this young saint that, although he had been for two years constantly in attendance on the Empress, He had never raised his eyes to look at her face. Oh, what an example, my child, for many who allow their eyes to wander to objects that ought never to be seen. St. Clair's Answer St. Clair, a Monte Falco, when speaking to anyone, never looked up at them, but always kept her eyes modestly cast down upon the ground. When she was asked why she always acted in this manner, she replied, Of what use is it for one to look into the face of the person to whom he speaks, since it is the tongue that speaks and not the eyes? If King David had only kept a watch upon his eyes when he was in the presence of others, he would not have had to shed so many bitter tears. The Picture of a Modest Child Father May, a holy priest in Germany, Thus describes a modest child. A child who is really modest, he says, will rise in the morning with these words on his lips God is here and sees me. Then he will be careful never to do anything which he knows would displease God. When he sees by chance something that he knows ought not to be seen, or hears words that he knows ought not to be said, he will turn away his eyes that he may not look. And go away as soon as possible that he may not hear the words again. If he happens to be in the company of those who do wrong and invite him to do it with them, he will run away as quickly as if he were pursued by a wolf and seek for a place of safety that he may escape destruction. At night he will retire to rest in the presence of God, and he arose in the morning and fall asleep with his arms modestly folded on his breast. Wherever he may be, he will always keep in mind that God is everywhere and sees all things. 
that his angel guardian is always at his side to watch over him, and who is there who could ever dare to conduct himself in an unbecoming manner in the presence of God and his holy angels. My children, continues the holy man, let the virtue of Christian modesty be the guiding star of your life, for children who are modest and pure shall be forever in heaven with God, but those who are immodest and impure shall be forever in hell with Satan. The most certain and easiest means of preserving holy purity is to be devout to the Blessed Mother of God. If you pray to her for help in every temptation against the holy virtue, she most certainly will protect you.